Hi guys, my name is Mohsin Mullah and I welcome you all to this very interesting lecture series on microcontroller and its applications. So in this video lecture series, we are going to learn about various aspects of PIC18F microcontroller. We are going to learn about components of PIC18F microcontroller, its architecture, assembly language programming, interfacing and different applications of PIC18F microcontroller. So to begin with, in today's video lecture, we are going to look into block diagram of a generic microcontroller. So block diagram of a generic microcontroller. So guys, before actually we look into block diagram of a PIC18F microcontroller, we need to look at a, a most basic or fundamental block diagram of a generic microcontroller. Because almost all the microcontrollers will be consisting of the very fundamental blocks that we are going to learn in this particular block diagram. Later on, as per the requirements and advancements, the different microcontrollers have been evolved over a period of time to incorporate various other important components in them. But a very basic block diagram of a, a microcontroller looks like this. So here, basically any microcontroller will be built on a single chip. Okay, so here there will be a, a single chip as you can see in this figure and then on top of that there will be a central processing unit placed which is used to carry out all the uh, important functions of a microcontroller like it is going to do the data processing, it is going to do the arithmetic and, bi bi uh, arithmetic and logical operations on the binary data and also it is going to control the various input and output devices. Then there is another very important block which is a memory block. So memory is very very essential part of any microcontroller because whatever codes we run on a uh, microcontroller and whatever data that it is going to generate it needs to be stored in a certain location so that uh, CPU can access that data at any point of time as and when it is expected to uh, carry out a certain task. Therefore, those data and the program codes are uh, stored in the location which is there in the memory part of the microcontroller. Then there is another very important part which is input output port or input output interfacing. So input output as the name suggests that the microcontroller is as it is a single chip but in order to make it as a applicable to various appliances or applications we need to interface various input devices and output devices to the microcontroller so therefore we need to have separate input output port in the microcontroller so there is a uh, input output port uh, block that you can see here okay and then you can see that <coughs> to have a communication among all these three important blocks of the microcontroller there needs to be different lines of communication so these electrical lines are called as buses so these lines are called as buses and the uh, bus that you can see here on this particular uh, on this particular uh, top level it is called as address bus address bus it is used to transport addresses of the memory locations and the input output ports okay so usually this bus will be having 16 bits or 32 bits so address bus of a microcontroller can be 16 bit or 32 bits okay so whatever address it will have it can be uh, it can be made up of 16 zeros ones combination or 32 zeros and ones combination so this bus is used to have carry the addresses to and from the CPU to memory location as well as it will be uh, taking the inputs from the input port to the CPU as well as output commands from the CPU to the output ports. Okay. Then there is another important bus which is called as a data bus. Okay. So data bus. So this data bus as the name suggests is used to transport data from CPU to the memory location or extract data from the memory location to the uh, accumulator of the CPU and also to send the high or low signal to the input output port. So therefore this particular bus is used to carry the data uh, from CPU 
to and fro, uh, from the CPU to the different memory and input output ports. So, here the data bus can be 8 bit in size, 16, uh, 14 bit in size and also 16 bit in size. Okay. So, these are the three sizes that are available for any data bus. Okay. So, then there is another very important bus which is called as control bus. So, this is called as a control bus. So, there are totally three buses uh, available in the entire microcontroller. So, one is address bus, then there is data bus and uh, third one is control bus. So, now we understood what is the role of a data, uh, address bus and then what is the role of a data bus. So, now uh, here comes the very important bus which is called as a control bus. So, as the name suggests, so this will carry the control commands from the CPU to the memory or input output ports. So, here control commands can be read instruction or write command. Okay. So, write or read. So, here uh, the control bus can carry the uh, a particular bit which will suggest whether to read a particular location from the memory or write a certain data in the memory location or also to carry out uh, the uh, task by using the proper input output ports. So, it will carry the uh, particular uh, you can say port number or the activation of a port to act as a input port or to act as a output port. So, it is going to control the input output ports as well. Okay. So, I hope you uh, the things are clear with you the what is the role of all the three uh, buses here as well as the three main important parts of the a microcontroller here. Okay. So, now this coming to this input output port. So, input output port how does it actually uh, inter interact with the outside world? It, it will interact with the outside world with the help of different uh, pins connected to the input output ports and available to uh, for the external connection. So, for the external connection or outside world connection what, what all things can be connected. So, you can see here so, we can connect a keyboard just to give certain commands to the microcontroller or we can also connect a human machine interface that is whatever in uh, digital uh, surface that nowadays we have uh, with the help of touch screen we can uh, insert certain commands. Okay, so, that is human machine interfacing uh, device can be used as well as uh, the uh, peripherals can be some output devices which will carry out certain tasks such as a motor. Uh, whose speed can be controlled by using uh, microcontroller. So, this, mo this motor is connected to the uh, microcontroller with the help of this input output ports. Okay. And then also whatever uh, information that we want to display on the display can be displayed with the help of a display device which is also a output device and this uh, output device will also be connected to the microcontroller with the help of this input output. Ports. So, therefore, input output ports are also very very important in order to make the microcontroller actually applicable to various uh, applications. Okay. Now, let us uh, try to see in detail what all these uh, different blocks actually are used for. Okay. So, let me first of all take the CPU. So, as the name uh, from the name you can make it that uh, CPU is nothing but central processing unit central processing unit. So, central or it is the main part of the microcontroller which is also called as brain of the microcontroller. So, whatever appliance that you have in your house like washing machine, microwave oven or any other electronic appliance like uh, you have your uh, nowadays whatever bikes are coming they are coming with the fuel injection system. Okay, so, uh, all of these will be carrying a microcontroller and uh, to do all the tasks. So, here a uh, very important part of the uh, that microcontroller is the central processing unit. Okay, so, it will be brain of the microcontroller. What actually does this uh, uh, CPU do? Okay, so, CPU basically uh, will have to run certain tasks. So, it will uh, first of all it will uh, fetch the codes or the instructions or the programs already present in the memory uh, to uh, carry out certain task. So, once it uh, fetches the codes then next part it is going to do is it is going to understand what is there in that set of codes. So, it is going to interpret, interpret, okay, interpret the instructions or the codes. 
so codes are also called as instructions okay interpretation or decoding which is also called as decoding because uh, whatever instructions are written so it needs to understand what exactly it has to do so therefore it is going to interpret once it understand what it has to do then it is going to execute execute those codes or those instructions so these are the main uh, functions of the my, uh, that cpu in the microcontroller okay uh, apart from this the cpu is also used to carry out uh, mathematical and logical operations on the binary data okay so it is going to be used for uh, mathematical and logical operations so for that uh, to carry out this mathematical and logical operations so it has got a special circuitry okay so special circuitry is available in the cpu to carry out this uh, mathematical and logical operations so there, there is a special uh, circuitry yeah, so that circuitry is called as alu okay which is called as alu arithmetic and logical unit so with the help of arithmetic and logical unit so we can uh, use the microcontroller to cal calculate certain uh, info uh, data and uh, get the required results okay so these are the main functions of uh, cpu in a microcontroller okay so in detail we are going to see about the cpu when we are going to deal with uh, uh, components of the microcontroller or pic 18f microcontroller in the later parts so next part is the memory so here memory as i told you earlier that it is a very essential part of any microcontroller as it is going to store uh, various programs or instructions and also it is going to store the data so to do that it has got two parts one is called as read only memory rom and another one is called as ram which is random access memory okay so the total memory of the microcontroller is basically divided into two parts read only memory and uh, random access memory now what is the purpose of read only memory so this read only memory is as the name suggests it can be only read okay so this memory is consisting of codes or instructions so here it is used to store store the codes or instructions instructions okay so this uh, is non volatile memory basically this uh, uh, read only memory is non volatile memory means uh, here whatever programs or instructions are stored in this memory so they are going to remain intact even if the power is turned off or on so with the on off process the uh, content in the memory is not going to change it is going to stay all the time so that is what the non volatile memory means okay so this here uh, basic function of the read only memory is to store the various instructions or commands so uh, suppose if you are uh, using a washing machine at your home you keep a certain mode of the washing machine like uh, you keep uh, for the uh, that particular mode you are going to keep for say washing of the jeans so for this there is command written that the speed should be certain n1 and time taken should be say t1 okay so like here it might be 1500 rpm so here it might be say for half an hour or 30 minutes one hour etc so this is already stored in the fair read only memory or rom so whenever we set the knob to that particular position so the, this instructions will be uh, addressed and uh, cpu is going to uh, extract this instructions so it is going to fetch the code from these and also it is going to understand what is to be done what is to be done means it has to set 1500 rpm as the uh, rotation uh, revolutionary speed of the motor and also that revolution take place for 30 minutes and once it understands then it is going to execute execute means it is going to send the command to the uh, drum as well as to the timer to start and it will count on uh, till the 30 minutes are over and it the machine is going to automatically stop so that is how you can understand what is the role of this cpu and how it uh, interacts with the memory in order to carry out that task okay then there is ram okay so ram is nothing but random access memory 
okay so even uh, we will be using mobile phones at that time so we will be looking at the uh, what is the ram size 4 gb 6 gb 8 gb 12 gb etc so nowadays up to 32 gb it is available so random access memory so this is basically used to store to used to store variables or the data variables or data which is generated at the time of execution of the instruction okay so here this particular memory random uh, access memory is volatile in nature it is volatile in nature so volatile means what as the uh, device is going to be turned off so whatever data is stored previously it will get erased okay so that data will be lost so next time whenever next uh, instruction is being executed at that time the new data will be stored okay so for example so we are using a microwave oven at our house and for microwave oven there will be different settings so like uh, we have the 100 degree 120 degree say 140 degree etc okay so these are the temperature settings so now once uh, i am running the uh, i have turned on the uh, that microwave oven and i want the temperature to be set at this particular value so this will become uh, the time variable and this value will become sorry temperature variable okay so this is this is temperature variable and it will become uh, equal to 100 degree celsius okay so that is one variable and this is its data okay and also uh, depending upon uh, requirement of the food item so we are going to set the time so that time may be say 15 minute 20 minute etc so this is also going to be a variable and this is going to be a data so for particular food item we are going to make the settings and at that time only these values will be available and these values where they will be stored so these are going to be stored in the ram for the time being uh, or the uh, requirement of that particular uh, execution of the task only for that purpose this will be stored and once that uh, task is completed and the uh, microcontroller or the the appliance is uh, turned off and reset at that time these values will be lost okay so that is why it is called as random access memory so here uh, particularly the word random access so uh, i think uh, you need to understand the context here so random access uh, uh, here it is uh, uh, you can understand only with the in the context of the sequential access so here random access means what so there in the memory so there will be lot of locations available okay so there will be lot of memory locations available so random access means so whatever uh, location we want so that location can be accessed randomly so here there is very less time required okay so to access the uh, that particular uh, memory location very less time is required so in case of a sequential memory so what will happen is the pointer will start from the last location and then it is going to go to the current location so therefore here the time is more so it will start from the last location to current so therefore time is more so for this time is more in the sequential access memory okay so sam so in place of that if it is ram so it will require very less time because it can access the particular location without much delay okay so therefore it is called as random access memory And then coming to the uh, third and a very important part of uh, microcontroller, which is the input-output ports. So input-output ports are nothing but uh, it is nothing but the uh, inter uh, input-output interface. So this is the interface between the microcontroller and the outside world. So microcontroller, uh, as on it on its own, it does not do anything. So we need to give certain instructions, commands. Uh, to the microcontroller so for that we need to have a input device so which is nothing but keyboard so any programmer will be using keyboard to enter the required set of instructions or the codes and these codes will be uh, entered through the io port and uh, through the uh, buses uh, used here so these uh, these uh, instructions will be stored in the rom and whenever a particular uh, program needs to be run that cpu is going to access that code and it will run accordingly okay so therefore we have to have a input device connected to the microcontroller so that input device is keyboard and to connect this keyboard to the microcontroller we need to have a input output interface which is available because of this input output 
ports likewise we can also have uh, so here it is a keyboard and uh, it is a input device here in uh, particularly this is a input device so it is used to enter the enter the codes okay as well as commands then particularly if you want to give certain commands then another input device which is nothing but the human machine interactive interface okay hmi interface we call it as human machine interactive interface so like uh, uh, on the that uh, washing machine or uh, microwave oven so you'll have a, a selection uh, different tabs will be available so when you press a certain tab so certain command is given command is inserted so whatever uh, earlier examples are told you jeans washing so our uh, uh, temperature at a certain degrees so these are all commands so these are given through the that interactive uh, here whatever interface is available so this is also going to be input okay it is going to uh, give the command and based on this command so the cpu is going to uh, extract the set uh, instructions already stored here and it is going to run uh, those uh, or execute those instructions in order to achieve the required task okay so now uh, whatever tasks are performed so those are performed on the output devices so output devices are also connected uh, to the microcontroller which we can see what is actually happening so here we can use a display to see the uh, particular result okay or also so display is definitely a output device because uh, you can see the uh, content of uh, cpu or uh, whatever you want to uh, see the results you can see with the help of this cpu okay and then uh, you can also directly give the output command to various output devices like this motor so we can control the speed of the motor okay or also we can set the time uh, for how long it is going to rotate okay so that also can be set so likewise uh, so dif different tasks can be performed with the help of microcontroller with the help of simple uh, instructions so whatever instructions we have written here so depending upon that the cpu is going to execute understand that and uh, uh, execute those instructions uh, with the help of input output port and the corresponding output uh, appliance is going to perform the required task for us okay so that is how the overall microcontroller works uh, so uh, in sync with each other okay so in sync with each other and uh, therefore these are all very important uh, we can say devices uh, uh, or components of the uh, basic microcontroller controller which are essential in order to make any microcontroller to be useful for a certain application okay so i hope uh, uh, you guys have clearly understood what are the basic elements of a microcontroller and what is the role of each and every element of uh, that microcontroller okay so in the coming video lectures we are going to uh, explore more about uh, the various components of the pic 18 f microcontroller and there we are going to see in detail exactly how uh, each of these different devices are laid out in a microcontroller and how they perform various tasks expected of them okay so till then i hope uh, you will be safe and you will keep learning okay i'll see you in the next video lecture till then take care keep learning bye bye